Got your back, Rovers win! We're on the verge of promotion, baby! That's right, folks, back once again with another match review. This time, looking back at the latest mega match that was Blackburn Rovers up against Peterborough. Now, we'll talk about that match in just one second, but if you are new to the channel, hit the subscribe button. I'll keep your bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers, and that's right. Oh, uh, what a match. What a what an end to the match, should I say. The first half was uh, 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 a complete and utter shit show, to be honest with you. I thought I thought we'd blown it. No, I only thought blown it. In fact, I thought the skipper had blown it with that big fat OG, which gave Peter the lead on the 44th minute. Oh, my goodness. What a way to go into the halftime uh, uh, break. We're going over the goal down after a big fat OG. The skipper must have been raging. The gaffer must have been raging. But, hey, and a lot of credit must go to Tony Mowbray for giving probably would have been two or three earfuls to the players at halftime because they came out and they had the bit between the teeth. And thank heavens for the League One Player of the Year. That's right, Bradley Dak with two goals to his name on the day. And Danny Graham gets the other one sandwiched in between those two uh, Bradley Dak uh, specials. Uh, every goal he scores is special. In fact, they're such a dream team to have, especially in this division. Let's hope that that little marriage can continue on next season, wherever we're going to be playing football. And to be honest with you, it looks, yes, it looks like the championship. We are now second place still, but only on goal difference. We have played one more game than uh, Wigan, but we are now a massive eight points clear over Shrewsbury. We've played one more game uh, as well, the more than Shrewsbury, and they could close the gap back down to five points, but Oh, there's a little bit of a little bit of a breathing space there, but yes, let's take a look at the match in a little bit more detail. Uh, here are the statistics as provided by the BBC. Blackburn Rovers with 55% possession compared to 45% for Peterborough. 12 shots for Rovers, nine for Peterborough, five on target for Rovers, three at the back of the net, four for Peterborough, eight corners, four for Borough, uh, or the posh. And uh, 13 fouls and 10 fouls for Peterborough. Let's take a look at my Matt. Well, first of all, it's the starting 11. Ryan Gold, Bennett, Lemon, Mulgrew, Williams, Evans, Smallwood, Dak, Armstrong, Antonson, and Graham. I was close. I think I started with Lennon in the back and Downing in the centre of, of the fence. But uh, no, Bennett got back and right back. And Antonson got the nod. And here are my match ratings. Now, it's a bit of a topsy-turvy kind of match rating. David Ryan got an 8. Bennett with a 7. Lennon with a 7. Mulgrew with a 6. Williams with a 7, Evans with a 6, Small with a 6, Dak with a 9, Armstrong with a 6, and Tonson with a 5, and Danny Graham with an 8. So why, why the mixed ratings? Well, Antonson, he had a couple of couple of guilty chances in the first half where he should have squared it to a, a, a more informed striker, whether it be Armstrong or Graham. Uh, but he decided to go, go all out and go for the glory, and it was actually horrendous efforts. Into the middle of the park, Smallwood and Evans, they did just enough to keep Peterborough at bay. Obviously, that only goal coming from that corner uh, and at the back. Mulgrew probably would have had a seven should he had not put the ball in the back of the net. But I'm going to have to knock him down a point for that. Maybe, just maybe, he won't do that again because that was a nasty, nasty time to score a big fat OG, especially where uh, the, the situation that we are in the table. And David Ryan pulled off some stonking saves, especially the, the free kick that preluded that. OG corner. Let's take a look at our, uh, the opposition. O'Malley, Gold, Taylor, Baldwin, Hughes, the, the Silva, Lopez, Doughty, Grant, Cooper, Edwards, Marriott, and Lloyd McGoldrick. Now, Marriott did not manage to add to his amazing tally of whatever, how many, 32 goals this season. Uh, I think this uh, De Silva Lopez looks like a decent player as well for Peterborough. So all in all, I know it's unfortunate that Peterborough had to be on the on the losing side. They're a decent side. Uh, I think their manager Steve Evans has got them playing the right kind of football. And I hope, I hope, if you are watching this, any of the posh fans out there, you need to beat Shrewsbury. That's right, get Shrew beat Shrewsbury, and you'll get your playoff push back on track because you are only three points adrift. Yes, some of the sides above you do have games in hand. Uh, such as Plymouth and Scunthorpe, but we'll be taking on Charlton, so maybe we could do you a solid uh, then towards the back end of our season. But all in all, what a what a stressful 90 minutes, especially the first first half. I I, I, I didn't know. I just didn't know where we were going to go from there. I thought, if, I, if I'm honest with you, I thought we were going to lose. 
put my hand on my heart. I thought we were going to lose, and I thought this is going to be the beginning of a bit of a bottle drop. You know, I did mention the bottle drop in the uh, in the review of the last match, but no, I think Mowbray called it, and he and he and credit. Credit to Bradley Dack. He has been looking off the boil the past two or three games. And, and, and there were some pre-match words of wisdom by uh, Mowbray saying that uh, um, Bradley Dack has been looking the sharpest he's has all season going into this match. And what do you know? Two goals for the lad. And also a big fat DG on the score sheet as well. Now you've heard a bit of what I've had to say about the match. What did the gaff have to say shortly after the final whistle between Blackburn Rovers and Peterborough? Well, it ultimately finished a great night for us. I think, um, I think huge credit to Peterborough for the way they came and played. Um, he obviously changed his formation. He gave us some problems playing two number tens, and um, yeah, they moved the ball around really well. I thought they were really athletic and, and, and technical. Um, when we played against teams this year with a back three, normally we've pressed really high and caught them in possession and, and give them lots of problems and scored goals. And we had some opportunity to do that, to, you know, particularly really early on, but. Um, but we talked long and hard at half time about whether we were going to sit off and counter attack or whether we were just going to find some more energy and press right on. And we decided the latter. And, and I thought we smothered them second half. I think we um, and got the rewards of playing a really high energy, high tense game, really. So, um, and I think we connected with the supporters. I think the supporters want to see their team running, tackling, fighting, challenging for every ball. And um, and that's what we managed to do. And we got we got the result we required. Yeah, yeah. Listen, I've I've said for a long time they the, the, the players the players have got a big say in how we approach this team and this game and how we're going to set up and what we're going to play and um, and you know we, that decision was made that we're going to go for it really we're going to play on the front foot and we could have as I said we could have sat deep because they were giving us problems and counter attacked I could have brought Danny off and put Dominic and Armour up front and had some speed to break away but um, we decided to just go for it really and gamble and push right onto them and um, and it's paid dividends. Um, I'm just pleased that they understand football and they know the, the different ways of doing. They're not just footballers who, who, who just come along and play the game and play their position. They're actually feeling what's happening on the pitch. And as I say, we give them options at half time, really, of what's the best way. And we felt because we have to score, we have to try and win the game. We um, we were going to go on the front foot, but they, if we were going to do that they'd get picked off if they didn't have bags of energy to do it because if you're closing people down and they pass around you like having fist half a little bit um, you're in trouble because they're into your back four but I didn't think that happened second half I thought we managed it really well scored at good times of course but um, the biggest thing for me the spirit of the team the connection it makes with the supporters when the fans can see that the team are at it and really on the front foot um, and, and I've just said to them there, we're going to come in tomorrow, we're going to assess all the, all the injuries, there's a few feeling their hamstrings there late on, and, um, and then they'll have a day off the rest and, and get ready to go again on Tuesday. Amazing, isn't he? He's, um, as I said to you, he hit the highest speed data that he's had since he came to the club in training two days ago, um, from literally not breaking out of a jog for two matches. And, um, and when Bradley doesn't perform, the team find it hard to be creative and, and score goals. And tonight, as you said, he was back to his best. And um, and uh, that's the Bradley we know and love. Well, listen, that eight-point gap on Saturday can be five points, and um, and it can get itchy again if we don't get the right result on Saturday. We need four points to guarantee it, basically. So let's go on on Tuesday night and try and get another three. And then whatever happens around us, we'll we'll take that, of course, if if, if there's some help along the way. But um, what we do know is we need four more points, and um, we've got three games to get them. Hey, bro, what the gaffers are the same, but what a little bit what I've had to say. What's been going on on social media? Let's take a look here. Our Blackburn Rovers, look at this little uh, picture of the man of the match, Bradley Dack, and the other goal scorer, Danny Graham. Just another day in the life of Bradley Dack. Speaking of Bradley Dack, massive character and togetherness at the club is unreal. There is no more adjectives to describe Bradley Dax. What a player. Special mention to DG. Unreal performance. Last push now. Rovers, that is from Elliot Bennett. Fist pump man. Also, Derek Williams. Massive win tonight. Great turnout also. Lads dug in deep right till the end. Need to rest up and get ready for Tuesday now. Hashtag BRSC. Amari Bell got on a little bit at the end of the game. Great fight for the lads. Turn the game around. Massive result. The end is near. Let's keep pushing. He was also in the team of the year. Probably more for, the, for his form for Fleetwood. 
But hey, he's with us now, and maybe, just maybe, we can make a championship left back out of him. Anyway, Marcus Anderson said this. Wow, to come back from behind today is such an important game. Just shows how good team we are. Fans are brilliant, as always. Can't wait for Tuesday now. See you in Doncaster. Bradley Dag also with a quick tweet. Well, that was some feeling tonight. What a performance. Second half from all the boys. Another step closer, and the fans brilliant, as always. Thank you, and a big thumbs up. X Rover, Tony, what was in there? Yes, DG, what a player, Matt Mousy. Just random, random Rover supporter in there. What a game, what a second half performance from Bradley Dak. Should be knighted after that. My next son will be called Bradley. Come on, Blackburn Rovers. Meanwhile, X Rover, that's right, X Championship, Premier League Division winning Rover. Uh, Mark Atkins said this. Get in, massive three points. Great second half, Rovers. Uh, BBC, blah, 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 blah. Meanwhile, Rob Young is some more fans for you. Absolutely phenomenal. Dax second goal was almost as sexy as his second goal at London Road in December. Luke Thornley, massive, massive win. Fantastic second half performance. Bradley Dak bossed the game. Second period, Mike Delap said this. Talk about tactics and formations all you want, but this man put the heart and soul back into a lifeless carcass which has been left to rot and die. No amount of praise, too much. That's in reference to Tony Mowbray. Meanwhile, Natalie said this. Well done, you guys. You had me worried at halftime, but knew you would produce some magic. Good win for you and result for us. Man of the match, Bradley Dak. What a guy. Good game. John Roy Ellicott said this. Well done to every single player. Proud to be a Rovers fan. Mac Mousty's back in there again. I don't know how he got in there twice, but we'll skip that one. Andy Neil Scott said this. Huge, huge three points for Rovers. Samuel Rovers. Oh, Samuel Rovers. Samuel Williams. Oh, I'm getting all my tongue. My words in a twist. Quality second half, though posh, were very, very good, but couldn't keep the intensity. Four more points, and we're uh, back over onto the BRFCS forum. If you've not checked out that forum, make sure you do so. It's a great opportunity for your chat with fellow Rovers, just like this guy, Tom Phil. Man, they made hard work for everything. We play so much better on the counter. I think that's Tony Mowbray's strong point coaching-wise. No idea how to pass and move and break teams down, but we set up disjointed in the first half, so no wonder. When they get in full flow, they're almost unstoppable with their attacking play. Anyway, job done in the fine style at the end. Don't care how they set up. Now we can go and draw all three if he wants tonight. Should have just about sealed it. Get in, he says. Doxy, I thought Graham was a behemoth in the second half. So much for only having 60 minutes in those legs and so much for being finished. Our big players made the difference. Shrewsbury won't be relishing facing that Peterborough side. Meanwhile, Evans almost cost us that result with that tackle. Shocking. Deserved a red. Big dog steal. I think the way Peterborough played their way, always were going to get themselves burnt out. They ran themselves into the ground first half. Could have, had, could have been 3-0 up, but they tired massively second half and sat back. So we had more of the ball in their third. The class players did the damage then. As for Blue Boy, 3-3-3-3. Biggest win of the season. Massive pressure. Massive result. I don't even think Rovers can botch this up from here. Hey, huge credit to Mogger and the boys. And we'll wrap it up with Stewart. Well, that was a game of two halves, if ever there was one. Getting a goal early in the second. Settled the nerves. And the last four... Uh, four plus four reminded me why we put up with football through the bad times. Mowbray has to take the blame for the first half and the way we set up, but he deserves credit for what happened in the second, particularly moving Armstrong out to the side left and creating space for Williams and to a lesser extent Bell. If that was a game plan to soften them up for later, it was genius, but I suggest it was more to do with Dak returning to form with a bang. Wonder if he got a text from his GF about his first half. No show. Brilliant end to the game and it gives us daylight. I think Shrewsbury will beat Berry, so it keeps the cushion to five. With only three games left, with any luck, it will start to rest. Tire players for the playoffs. Massive, massive relief and a massive relief for me too. I can't, you know, uh, whoa. Woo! Anyway, as other games have been going on this week, let's take a sneak peek. Obviously, top of the pops there is the Rovers 3-1 win against Peterborough. Also, in action on Tuesday night, Bradford City picked up a 3-1 win over Portsmouth. Are they back in the playoff race? Probably too little too late. Meanwhile, our next opponent is Doncaster. Can only imagine a 3-3 draw at home to Bury, so maybe we can get a win over those Doncaster punks who did open who did beat us early in the season at Ewood Park. Then Gillingham lost to Rotherham. Rochdale and Oldham battled out on 0-0. Draw Shrewsbury <coughs> lost to Charlton 2-0. And Wigan Athletic kept up their race for promotion with a 1-0 win over Oxford. That's pretty much all I've got for you today, folks. If you've enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. I'll keep you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers. I'm also on Twitter and Facebook. Dink links to those bad boys are in the description below. I also want to give a big shout out to Michael Jackson. Hee <laughs> hee. Not that one, but he knows who he is. So... 
Big thanks to you, one of the viewers out there, and uh, yes, that win was for you. Uh, Dak just rung me up, he says, that win's for you, Jacko. Anyway, uh, yes, massive, massive victory. Next up is Doncaster. I'll be previewing that game probably Saturday after the results have come in. You know, I think Shrewsbury take on Barry Wigan. I don't know who they are taking. I think they take on Bristol Rovers. But anyway, time for everyone to have a lie down. Time for everyone to have a bit of a breather. The table looks good. Not perfect just yet, but it looks okay. Anyway, until next time, thumbs up, subscribe. Ciao for now. Thanks again for watching. Please like, share, and most importantly, hit that subscribe button. It'll keep you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers. But if you want to check out something completely different, head over to my other YouTube channel. You do that by pressing the button right there. If you want to check me out on Twitter, Facebook, details are in the description below. So until next time, thumbs up, subscribe.